got into Iowa. Iowa. <laughs> the Iowa Corn Challenge. When in Rome, eat as the Romans eat. Mark can only eat corn for the whole time we're in Iowa. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21 years of corn. This is one day of corn. I'm gonna start eating it tonight. Mm. And Ben has to eat as many different products that contain corn as he can find. Blue corn tortilla chips, blueberry bagels, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup again, corn starch, corn cereal, modified corn starch, honey roasted peanuts, corn syrup and corn starch, corn relish. And I am not to eat any corn product or byproduct at all. This is the end of this organic gala apple and this is a not organic banana because they didn't have organic bananas. We call this the all corn, many corn, no corn challenge. It's the Yurt Corny Challenge starting tonight in Iowa. Bring it! Bring it! Bring it corn! We're here at the farmer's market in Des Moines, Iowa. Get some corn for Mark and uh, to possibly get some, uh, we're going to be looking for some local ethanol. So you're a trucker and a farmer. Right. It just seems kind of strange that farmers putting their whole endeavor into uh, making fuel when they used to make food. A lot of people are starting to plant more corn than beans. We usually rotate every two years, but people have been doubling up on the corn, which I don't know if that's a good thing because corn really takes out the nitrogen from the soil. A lot of people don't realize that the largest share of fuel used in the United States is in trucks. Well, even though I'm a trucker, railroads is a solution. Uh, they're, uh, I understand they're some 35 times as efficient. People buying local uh, around here, it's, it, it saves a lot of transportation. The uh, food's a lot better, and uh, it's better for you. Hmm. It's good. So far, so good. Ben, how's your corn? Save so chips? Mm-hmm. Relish? Yeah, I'm really slumming it here, dude. I don't know how I'm ever going to make it through five whole days Chips of eating 90% of what's in the grocery store. You're going to make a lot of garbage. I will. I'm going to love every minute of it. We're here in Nevada, Iowa at the Lincoln Way Energy Ethanol Facility. What do you all do here at this place? Uh, make moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> this is 200 proof ethanol. <laughs> Pure alcohol. That's 100% corn, right? Yes. So I could just drink that and it would still fit into my dietary restrictions for the week. <laughs> yes, it would. It might take care of your diet restrictions for a day. We get corn in, we uh, grind it up, ferment it, separate the water and the corn you know, to get the ethanol out of it. We ship a lot of it out on rail cars and there's a lot of it shipped out on the uh, trucks from here. We got at least put 2% gasoline in with the ethanol before it leaves. We just got to denature it. What does denature mean? make it undrinkable. This is where our corn comes in at. You've got to train cars. We load up our byproduct, which is a DDG, distillers dried grain. Cattle, poultry, using it for feed. Why did they start building this plant? Just some local farmers and people wanted to just start one, ultimately to make money and supply with air. And everybody else was uh, building them around and making lots of money. So they figured they'd get on the bandwagon. Corn breakfast. challenge breakfast. And I ate it all and oops. Who would think? that there's corn in your yogurt. Corn syrup solids, corn starch modified, and citric acid, gelatin, and carrageenan, which I'm pretty sure all three ha are corn derivative. Iowa has uh, right now uh, 30 some odd ethanol plants. A lot of the crops that we have here are in fact being converted into ethanol or biodiesel. What we're looking at are alternative means to be able to take a variety of different feedstocks, subject them to a variety of different processes, and be able to make uh, hundreds if not thousands of different products to replace at least some portion of the petroleum that we're using in the country. When the settlers came to Iowa and this part of the prairie they saw oceans of grass and I'm here to tell you about an alternative to corn grain ethanol. Perennial grasses, the beauty of perennial grasses is that they sort of undo a lot of the bad things that we think about when we think about intensive agriculture. With corn and other crops we think about erosion we think about putting on a lot of fertilizers that come from fossil fuels. We think about losing the fertility of the soil. And perennial grasses in many ways undo all that. 
because they're on the ground all year round. They're fixing a lot of carbon out of the atmosphere. They grow a lot of biomass. And um, it's hard to imagine any erosion happening when it rains hard on the, on the field you see behind us. If we could use those as a feedstock, they would be fixing carbon. And if we start to pay people significant amounts of money to sequester, to get rid of carbon out of the atmosphere, then perennial grasses may start to make sense to a farmer and, and to a fuel producer because there's value there in, in reversing um, climate change. My battle is just to get people, some people to appreciate the fact that farming is not just a worthwhile pastime, but a necessity. There's like an old Indian saying about the land, it's like the air, it doesn't belong to anybody. And if you can think in terms of that, then I think it'll be a little bit easier to be um, more mindful of the use of the land when you don't think it's actually something that you possess, but something that you're using while you're here. Do any of those proprietary processes involve wizards or wizardry? No. Nope. Dragons? No. Trolls or? No trolls. Do you hire kids out of college, some frat boys or something to come in here and taste, I mean test the ethanol? This is a non-drinkable alcohol. Then what are all those shot glasses doing in that cupboard there? Those are for lab tests. Oh, right. Oh, yes. For lab lab tests. Do my G okay. GQ thing. <laughs> no, we stay away from puppies. Grandmothers? Uh, we've had lots of grandmothers come through on tours. You've never used them. We were trying not to use them. Yeah. I really can actually understand how corn-fed beef feels. Crappy. Yeah. I I feel like crap.